Hi, Karen here from Off The Track Thoroughbred Success. Now, this video has been made um, in response to a question that I had from one of my students in um, my online course and at the Off The Track Thoroughbred Success Academy. And um, so it was in response to a video that she watched on YouTube from a, uh, another horse trainer educator. Um, and it was some confusion she got about um, where to hold the lead rope when leading and training your horse, so doing your in-hand work. Uh, because with equitation science, uh, so that's how I uh, retrain off the track thoroughbreds using equitation science principles, uh, we recommend and we train holding the lead rope up about 15 centimetres underneath the chin so that we can give clear responses. So this video was saying, um, it was labeled, are you making your horse more anxious? And it was then showing um, some uh, people that he sees in his clinics and how they stiff armed, hold their horse. Um, sorry, you can see my arm. Stiff armed, hold their horse out like this and leading. Okay, and that this is creating more anxiety in your horse uh, instead of, and also, so the reason they're holding their horse stiff armed out like this with the intent of solving a problem, but instead they're making the horse more anxious. Um, and then it goes on in the video to um, let go of the lead rope. Um, uh, basically, my, uh, the, my student got confused because of being told not to hold the lead rope um, up near their head collar so i just want to explain this video um that um i want to explain what is said in this video and how sometimes um information can get very confusing so this video um this other other video was um are you making your horse more anxious and then he goes on to say that something he sees a lot in clinics is um, where he sees people trying to solve a problem, but it makes the problem worse. And this is the problem of people leading the horse with a stiff arm um, and that they are putting pressure on the lead rope, um, carrying their arms stiff out to the side. We, so then he goes on to say um, that horses get security in the herd not from the physicality of people or physicality of each other but more of the awareness of the herd and they feel the ripple of energy so if there's a prey animal around um the horses will feel the ripple of energy and then they pick up on that energy and go now i'm going to challenge that one because firstly we um if you actually go and study horse behavior there's a lot of body signals that are given out um and two we aren't horses okay so we cannot communicate like another horse now that is one of the natural horsemanshipy um processes i think you know where we need to learn horse language um to be able to communicate with our horse uh i'm going to challenge that one because it's not so much that we need to learn horse language okay we need to learn how the horse learns how the horse's brain processes information to be able to train them ethically and correctly and also too to be able to um it create some clarity in our own head with training because if we're trying to be a horse and learn how to communicate like a horse. I mean, that's just, <laughs> that sends your brain a little bit um, wonky. Now I've been down the whole path many, many years ago um, where I got very, I mean, I've, I've been through a lot of, you know, a lot of issues with training my horses over the years because of getting very confused in training methods. But I just wanted to point out how sometimes information can get very confusing um, when we're learning how to uh, train horses. And particularly for me, my focus is retraining off the track thoroughbreds. So I just wanted, to, um, so going back to this video and how, take me back 10 years, I would get very confused trying to work out what to do from this video so um i just wanted to break it down and get some clarity uh to you guys and how um some trainers can give out some very confusing information that's sort of blurry and can can, can 
can cause issues with training our horses. So I'm not sure um, why he's brought in the ripple of the herd, but I presume it's because he's saying that, um, well, I know why he's brought it in, um, but it's not really, it's not really um, part of solving the problem that he's seeing these people do, and I'll say why. But then he goes on to say, horses are silent communicators. They communicate with energy. They read our energy. Well, horses are silent communicators, but they communicate with body language. And yet everything is energy. Um, I mean, I'm not going to go down the whole spiritual path and <laughs> quantum physics, but everything is energy. And when horses read energy, they can see the slightest tilt of heads, okay, minute inches. They will pick up as cues. So that's how they learn. So they're not, um, when we're communicating with our horses, <laughs> I look, I'm a very spiritual person and I believe completely in energy and chi and meridians and the whole, all of that. But when it comes to training our horses, I think bringing in the whole energy bit can be very confusing because horses pick up on cues and associations. They will learn cues that we are not aware of giving. Okay, so it's not so much. This is my personal opinion, okay, and training with clear cues uh, using equitation science is what I teach. And the clear the clear aids then can be refined down to the most subtlest of cues, which I suppose you can say is sort of energy in a way. But I think coming in and bringing in the whole energy and horses can read out energy um, can get very confusing when it comes to um, training horses and particularly off the track thoroughbreds um, you know I'm going to say that you could stand with getting off the track thoroughbred that's just come out of racing you can stand there and put out the energy of I want you to step backwards and nothing ain't gonna happen that horse will run over you if it takes a fright <laughs> so sending out energy to an off the track thoroughbred off the track uh, straight off the track if it hasn't been trained to pick up the cues and everything. It's just not going to happen um, and it's dangerous. I'm just going to go now say, um, going through this video, so this trainer says when he sees a person holding the horse out with a stiff arm, so the example was in the video a lady was coming down with a horse that was, um, she had her arm out stiff and she was leading. Okay, so the horse was getting in front of her and she was sort of asking the horse to step back, but he was rushing in front. So he was pulling, okay? He wasn't listening to her when she put the pressure on the lead rope. And what she was doing also is she wasn't releasing pressure. Okay, so that was the situation that was being shown in the video. Um, and she had the stiff arm and holding out. So she was holding on to pressure um, with this horse and not, not releasing pressure. So, but the trainer then goes on to stay, um, the person's energy, so instead of looking at it from an equitation science point of view and what, what, what cues are or aren't being given to the horse, what training responses are happening, he then goes on to say that this person is usually putting out defensive energy. They are putting out and worried about getting hurt. Um, they're putting out this energy to the horse that's saying there's something wrong in the environment and you have to panic um, and that um, the horse feels this energy and starts to get all, you know, won't stand still and um, gets, you know, won't stand still basically he was saying. Um, so he says that when he sees horses that aren't standing still, usually the person is worried and nervous and um uh, yeah, and that's the reasons the horse won't stand still. Now, I am going to challenge this and say that this is completely incorrect. Um, it's going to be really hard if we're con and then if we are continually one punishing ourselves for having this so called bad energy because he says these people have this, um, would you type of bad energy that they're giving out to the horses so then that's putting it on us to say oh god my energy is bad and i'm putting out this bad energy to my horse now when you have a horse that's not listening to you and is not clear on the cues and is pulling you forward in that one it's confusing and you, if you don't know what to do and you can get a little bit worried 
The horse is not going to say she's putting out this wooju bad energy. Um, he's just responding to either conflict in 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 aids being given. Um, that's, that's what he's responding to, a conflict in aids being given or he's not clear in his basic responses. It's not about this bad energy that you're putting out. Yes, horses will pick up on um, nervous energy. So it has been shown in research that if a nerve, if rider is nervous and their heart rate increases, that the horse's heart rate will increase. So yes, horses do pick up on energy. Um, or on, you know, they can, they can read, um, you know, a worried person. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying that they can't read the energy, but solving these problems isn't about changing your energy because that's putting a lot of pressure on us. And he goes on to say in the video, once you control your energy and, um, the horse can control his now. It's not, this is my take on it, okay? It's, um, I know that if I was um, back 10, 15 years ago, if I was being told that, that if I lead my horse around and I breathe and I just stay calm, my horse is going to stay calm. That's not going to be happening. Once again, especially with off the track thoroughbreds, okay? You can be as calm and as cool as a cucumber, but if you are not giving the clear responses and retraining correctly, okay, the horse can be anxious, can be stressed, can be, can be not standing still and you just calming down is not going to change that horse. But what is going to change the horse is giving them clear cues. Um, so I'm just comparing this video again. Um, so what he does say correctly in this video, so he says one thing that he sees is that this person is giving out this bad, bad, bad energy. What does he call it? Wuju energy or something. Um, and so the horse is thinking, oh, my God, there's a tiger in the environment and I've got to panic and I've got to panic. Um, my personal opinion that is completely incorrect and that would be make me as an owner or a trainer feel bad because I'm putting out bad energy okay and it's very hard I mean to go in and change your energy is not going to change the horse in a in in, in a lot of ways if you have a horse that's not clear to the responses what he does say that's correct in this um this video is that he says that's one part is your bad energies the other part is that these the the tra the owners um are always hanging on to the lead rope and not um, giving any release of pressure. Now, this is correct. If you are leading a horse and you're always hanging on to the lead rope, you are giving conflicting information because the horse is not getting any release of pressure. He is not understanding. So if you're, he's just dragging you and you continually have pressure on there. Okay. So that is correct. That is, that is called, um, conflict when the horse does not have any release of pressure. He has no idea what to, to do. He, um, He's, he has no clear aids of stop and go. So that is going to create anxiety in a horse and part of retraining off the track thoroughbreds and part of um, creating calmness in your horse is going back and really training the stop and go and the turn where your horse is in self-carriage and understands when to stop, when to go. Um, I get a little bit, he goes on into this video now. I'm not going to show the video because I'm not into, you know, sharing other other trainers' videos. Um, I just want to, I'm just responding to one of my students who was confused about what to do. So I'm just trying to break it down for her and help you guys, whoever watches this video. But he does go on to say that um, he... Um, he then gets, then then he has in the clinic when uh, they are standing around and they have the horse, um, they, he gets them to drop the lead rope really long. And then when the horse moves, the owners go back to grab the lead rope and he goes, no, 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 don't do that. Okay. So what he's allowing the horse to do is to, when they bring them in, um, let them have them on a long lead rope and the horse can just walk around and um, then the owner doesn't have this bad panicky energy going out. Um, I don't really see any um, 
you know, it, the horse is just wandering around. So he's just wandering around because um, he doesn't understand any cues and he thinks he can, you know. Then he, then the, 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 this person goes on to say, um, it's not good to control the horse's legs. Okay. Um, but he doesn't show in this video the way that he calms the horse down. He says, then says in this video that he has to go back and retrain the cues. Oh, the dogs are barking here. Always have dogs barking in my videos. Guys, turn it down. He has to go back and retrain the cues um, to get this horse nice because he then shows how the horse is going forward um, nice and forward off a light lead rein response. And he does mention he has to go back and teach the horse um, the the aids to the stop, to, to the pressure release because he's become um, habituated to the pressure from the owner holding the hand out here. So he does it. He says that um, it's not about controlling the horse's legs, but to get the horse to respond to the soft pressure, okay, that he shows at the end of the video, the only way he can he can achieve that is by teaching pressure and release, which is controlling the horse's legs. So I'm just trying to point that out because it can be very confusing when trainers bring in this whole spiritual, my horse feels and thinks energy and all of this and that. Uh, and it's all lovely. Um, to think, you know, where we communicate energetically with our horse, and yeah, we do, but it's that's not a, that's um, that comes down to very the, the whole energetic communication. Now, this is me, okay, and as I, I'm an extremely spiritual person, um, and I, I feel like I have a deep connection with my animal. My, well, I do. I have a deep connection with my animals and my horses. But that doesn't change. My spiritual aspect does not change that I approach my training in any way. I am absolutely, I love equitation science. I think to become spiritually connected with anybody or anything, you need to understand that person. You know, if I want to be connected to another human, I don't want to go in and and act like them. Okay, to connect with them, I understand them as a human, as an individual. I look at my horse, he's an individual, he's a different species. I learn how his brain works, I learn how he learns. I learn to teach him clear responses. I understand that when a horse is clear in their training, they start to relax and become calm. Now, going back to these women, you know, because he goes on to say these women, oh, this, well, I'm not going to say women, this is a woman, but the people that are holding their hands like that, they have no control of their body. Okay, so they automatically, unconsciously, they are unconsciously able to control themselves so they go and grab the horse, not wearing that they're holding pressure. Yes, they probably are unaware that they have continual pressure on the horse. That's because they do not know how to teach the horse pressure and release. They haven't been taught pressure and release. How do I train my horse? Pressure and release. If you don't know that release of pressure is training your horse, like riding track work, okay, way before I understood this, racehorses go around leaning on the pressure all the time. Unless you understand how to get your horse in self-carriage, it's by release of pressure. I mean, I, I was taught by very traditional ways, all the way, you know, dressage and show jumping, have your horse on the bit, pressure, pressure. That's not because I am, I have, I can't control my body it's just that i didn't know how to train correctly i didn't understand the pressure release um is so important in in, in training so i'm um, uh, yeah i i feel like this video um is very confusing um when it comes to really looking at like it's got some good points but it's not it's 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 gone a little bit tangent from the actual problem so the 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 video is are you making your horse anxious well you're making the only reason this horse is anxious is because the owner is having continual pressure on the lead rope and the horse is getting confusing he has no release of the pressure okay so he's um getting a he's getting um conflict um aids he has he can't get rid of the pressure um so that is creating anxiety in the horse it's not because the owner has bad wuju energy um, it's not because she can't control her body and she's unconscious. She just hasn't learnt correct training. So, um, and having the lead rope dangly loose is really, um, it's not doing a lot for the horse. It's only getting the relief of continuous pressure, but there's no real, um, 
you know, um, yeah, I just don't really see the, the, the point in having the horse just wandering around. I mean, you can. It's more about being clear in your responses. Um, I don't let my horses dangle around on a lead rope when I'm training them because I want clear responses. As they're very clear in their responses, um, you can definitely lengthen your, your lead rope. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to um, do a little um, pre-chat video um, before I take you into this training session to explain why I have put together this training session and that is to help my student who watched this video and is a bit confused about, oh, I was told that if I hold the lead rope 15 centimetres underneath the chin that it's going to cause anxiety in my horse and I'm putting out bad wooj. I think bringing the whole energy, um, wooju, bad energy thing into it is um, like punishing ourselves for not being able to control our energy. And I don't think that's um, really beneficial for our horses or for ourselves. It's much better to look at it from a learning theory point of view. How does my horse learn? And once you are so clear on how to train your horse and you're starting to get rewards um, and see progress in your horse responding, then your energy lifts up. Then you start to relax and you start to feel good and you start to feel connected with your horse because you're communicating clearly. Trying to change our energy while our horse is confused it, it's not really going to get you anywhere. I think it's just going to stress yourself out more and then ultimately stress your horse out. Um, I hope that makes sense. Look, please pop in the comments if you have any questions. Um, yeah, any questions or any want any me to clarify anything. Um, enjoy the video. I'd love to hear what you think. And yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. In today's video, I wanted to talk about leading. Um, and um, it's a video, just a quick video, just to answer one of my students' questions about leading horses. Um, this was, um, she sent me through a video from another educational uh, video that was put on YouTube and how she was concerned about leading the horse, holding the horse close to the clip uh, which we recommend in equitation science is not good. Uh, this other particular trainer said that uh, you don't want to be holding it close, you want a nice loose uh, lead rein. And so I just wanted to clarify um, the correct and most safe way to lead a horse. And I understand where this other trainer was coming from. He was talking about tension. So uh, what we're gonna do first here is this is beautiful dragon. So what the, the problem was is that the, she was showing how, cause I always recommend holding the lead rope about 15 centimeters, well, Bubba, so dragon's moving his feet. So dragon's just coming back into work now. He's actually my diploma horse um, for my exams. <laughs> hey? uh, so we're going to be filming dragons retraining. He's been retrained, but um, <laughs> he's having scratch. Oh, is that good? He's having scratches. <laughs> so he's not going to be perfect. He's going to have a few. Well, I know he does. He's not habituated to the whip at the moment. Um, so we'll go through that. But we're just doing a little leading. So the problem in this video, it was shown that. Um, they notice that when people owners lead their horses that they're very tense so they've got their arm out straight and they're leading like this um, and it was recommended to just let the lead rein go see already i've let the lead rein go and he's walked forward towards me so that means that he's not consolidating his park response which we want to work that's better good boy um, that's another lesson but with, with the leading so it was recommended just to stand there with your horse like this and to lead on a very long rein uh, like this um, and that you know uh, she was confused because she thought if we hold it up short that it's going to cause tension in the horse. Um, so this is not true, and I just wanted to do a video to show you the correct way to lead your horse. So we, you have to remember too, we're working with off-the-track thoroughbreds, and they, um, if you've got an off-the-track thoroughbred and they haven't been retrained um, to light responses to all your basic foundation training, um, they can bounce around. Uh, so having them on a long lead rope like this is one, see how he's wandering. Um, I can't control his leg and just correct his responses by a little step back. Good, release and reward. But two, you know, if you've got them on a lead rate like this, they can bounce around. I've got my horse Nina. I would not want to be holding her like this. Um, so 
Let me do it, demonstrate how they were showing how in the video it was a tense way of leading. So they had, he said he often sees um, owners leading with their arm out straight holding the horse. So let's just do this. So this, see how my arm's out straight, rigid. I actually find it hard to hold my arm out straight like this. So just because you hold your, your lead rein close to the clip, 15 centimetres of clip, doesn't mean you have to have a rigid arm. Um, so when you're leading, you definitely, I'm actually sticking this elbow up here too, just because I'm so rigid in my arm. You don't want to be leading with your elbow straight like this. Um, I hope you can see me. I'll just come to the video, see how I've got my elbow straight like this. Um, I'm leading him like this. So this is, is, is a tense body position. Uh, also too, with my elbow so straight and rigid like this, I can't control his responses. I have to actually bend my elbow, if you can see, to ask him to go light, forward, release, to give him a go forward response. Okay, so if I'm leading like this, I actually can't give him his forward response. So light, it's actually quite rigid. So it's very, um, it's correct in that you don't want to be leading your horse with your arm locked at the elbow like this. But you also don't want to be standing like this unless your horse is really, unless you're training, you've trained your horse park and you're practicing them being in self carriage. So drag, this is a, an example of park. So see how he's followed my legs? I take a step back, I just correct him. I might just ask him to take that other step back. Good, release, okay. So I can be very soft, so he's gonna follow me again. So I'm just, as I'm doing this, this lesson, I'm giving you an example of whether he is consolidated in his park. See, see how he's following me? So he's moved his hindquarters then, so I'm actually just going to, so I ask him to step back. And I take one more step back and release. Good. He's a little lick and chew, trying to work out what's happening. So I've got a long lead rope here, but see how to correct him, if I have him on a long lead rope like this, I have to kick down, ask him to step back and release. I'm actually giving, it's probably, you know, you need to be able to correct your horse pretty much instantly, within three seconds. So I'll just take a step back. So see how I have my rein like this, Standing here, he moves his legs. He's probably not going to now because he understands what I'm asking. See how I've corrected him a couple of times and now he's understanding. Good boy. Okay, so see, he's thinking of moving, he's moving. And see how I have to sort of lean down and correct, but it would be much easier while I'm training him in his basic responses and teaching him to be clear in his stop and go. Okay, so we want our horse to stop when we ask them to stop. We don't want them to move until we ask them to move. But this is a pro this is this is a, a progress of training, working through your basic responses from what's called basic attempt all the way up to very light responses where they're very um, clear and trained um, to what we call proof level. But see, if, if I walk around him and I'm holding him a little bit closer, I've got my elbow nice and soft, so I haven't got it out like this. I actually hold it a bit closer, so I walk around, and I might even put it in one hand, but see how he's moved? I can instantly, I can correct, I still had it a little bit long there, but I can correct him a lot faster than if I had it like this, okay? And I'm walking around, see so he's good, he's, he's gonna walk forward. So see how I have to lean down, correct, lean down, grab it and correct where, if I have it a little bit closer, so as I'm getting further away from him, I can lengthen it a bit, because I obviously, but when you're first training this, okay, you want to be able to use your backward lead rein pressure as soon as, so see he's good, so I reward him, and as he becomes more responsive, then I can lengthen my lead rope. But I want to be able to correct any incorrect responses that he gives. And you can't do that when you're like this. Also too, it's dangerous. Um, dragon's not dangerous, but if all of a sudden my dog started going crazy, he could spoop and jump on top of me. Um, and you know, even though he's a quiet horse, he's a horse and he's an off the track thoroughbred. 
And see, there's a dog behind there. If that dog's, see how I had to sh adjust my lead rein before I could correct his forward movement leg because I'm like this. Quite often you'll see other trainers when they move their legs or if I'm walking around like this, okay, and they start to move. See, he's following me. So see how I had to lean down or sort of slide my hand down and correct him where it's much easier if I've already got my hand in the position to be able to correct him. So back. And I can release it straight away as well. Good boy. He's on a little sigh. So a lot of other trainers, when they start to move, if the horse gets agitated and move around and moves around, um, they might have a flag at the end of their whip um, and they'll start to move around. So they might be heading off that way. Dragon might head off that way. So see, he's like, he's moving like this. So what they'll do is they'll get the flag and flick, flick at the back, okay, to try and get the horse's attention. Now, can you sort of see that Dragon always already looks a little bit worried? He doesn't really understand what I'm doing when I'm starting to. Uh, if I just walk around here and he's looking over there. Okay, so what they want, see how he's looking over there and they'll want the horse, I want the horse to be focusing on me. I want to build connection. So what I'll do is I'll get him to look at me by having a flag. Hey, turn him around. And I stop and he turns to me. But what's that teaching the horse? He's not really connected to me. He's just moved away from pressure. Okay, I've sort of, you know, I've, I've just put pressure on him and he's worked out, okay, if I move this way, she'll face me. But it actually hasn't taught him any other cue. Hasn't taught him to come forward. It hasn't taught him to go back. I'm not sort of controlling his legs. See, what they'll do again is, oh, I want my horse to have a connection on me. So I'm just gonna wave this flag yeah, and he'll turn to me, but see, he keeps walking. It's not real. <laughs> I haven't got any control of his legs. And then if something spooks him, he thinks he can just move his legs wherever he wants. Because I haven't taught him to stand unless I ask him to move. You have to be very clear with horses because if sometimes they can just move their legs randomly, then other times you're like, oh, I want you to stand still because I'm grooming you or um, I'm hosing you down and I'm saddling you. So sometimes they um, are asked to stand still and then other times you sort of change your, you know, oh, well, you can move your legs now, but you can't move your legs in a different situation. That's very confusing for horses. You have to be very clear with your, with your aids and what you're asking of them. So we always want to um, be, you know, when basically you're training them to, uh, you're training to be able to control their movement and their legs. And it's, it's, very clear training for horses and they understand it and they know what's expected of them and they can move away from the pressure and get the release of the pressure and that creates calmness and re relaxation. I hope that makes a little bit of sense in that because um, there's a lot of different training methods out there and there's a lot of conflicting information so I teach equitation science I want to teach very clear responses I want the horse to understand what I'm asking I want the horse to understand what is expected of him and he can relax. I'm teaching him to park. Now, if he walks, see how I just, to ask him to step back, release, reward, good boy. Oh, he stepped forward. He's probably a bit confused because release, good. So I use voice command, good. And he stepped forward, back, release. He's having a little lift, this forward. So I'm just gonna ask him to step back, release, good. So I'm just correcting him, rewarding him. Okay, now see how I haven't dropped my lead rope really long? Okay, so I've still got a connection there. My elbow is nice and soft. Okay, I can change. Um, so what I'm teaching him at the moment is park. Okay, so I might lengthen a little bit here when I think he may stand while I'm moving around, but then I can slide my hands up. He's gonna move forward, so I correct him straight away. Back. I'll just do one more step back. Good, release, good. Good boy. Hey? So he's understanding, okay, what I am teaching him. He's understanding his cues and he's, he's learning to understand his cues and his aids. He understands that, oh, I stand here until she asks me to move. I can relax. And then this just transfers to under saddle. If I was under saddle, I would be doing the same thing, okay, 
with my rain aid. So a lot of people have problems with their horse standing at the mounting block. So this it just so had a saddle on and the mounting block and I've got some lessons with this and he started walking off like there. I would not, I would just ask him to step back, reward. Okay, stand, step up on the mounting block. If he starts to walk, stop, ask him, correct him, reward until he's understanding. Oh, I just stand here. And he's pretty relaxed, aren't you? So let's just give an example of how you can lead your horse without having your, your rein like this. As I said, I can hold him a little bit closer. My elbow's nice and relaxed. I've got my dressage whip. Okay, I can move around him, but I don't have to have my arm out like this. I don't have to lead him. Even though I'm holding a little bit shorter, I don't have to have a touch of forward response. See, that's, I don't have to like have it like that. Okay, so ask him, release, good. So see if I was leading like this, letting him follow. Well, we're a bit close to the camera, I hope you can see. Like this, so leading on a long rein, he's dragging behind. I stop. See how he keeps walking? He stopped, but he's following my movement. So this is going to be confusing for him. And now if I walk again, see how he's learned to just follow my steps? He's not responding to the cues. But what happens when you're in the wash bay? and you walk away. Okay, then he wants, he's thinking, oh, well, you know, I won't stand still, I'll walk around because I'm supposed to follow or I want to go here. It's not clear. I hope that makes sense. So you want everything to be clear. Whereas I, as I walk like this, to so see how my elbow's nice and relaxed, we say about, what, and see how I can correct him? So he's a bit confused because I've had, and he's doing a little side because he's had, I've been doing a little bit of conf confusing training for him, but I'm holding about 15 centimetres underneath the clip. My elbow's nice and soft. I don't move my legs. I ask for forward first. Then I move my legs. So I'm teaching him one cue. Forward with the lead rope. He's a bit heavy. But see how when I ask for forward, a bit heavy. I still have my elbow nice and soft. I'm sort of at the level of his head. If he gets a little bit lazy, like he is here, light forward lead, heavy foot, a little bit um, firmer. If he doesn't respond, release. Light, heavier, and release. A little bit lazy, he's getting a little bit draggy, so light, heavier, and release. So he's a little bit heavy in his responses, so we'll work on that. Good boy. So if I wouldn't be able to ask him to just bounce up into trot here. Oh, actually, you think he knows the word drawn out, <laughs> but light, heavier. So see how my elbow's nice and soft, my body's nice and soft. Okay, I'm breathing, but I haven't got this long lead rope, light, heavier. But as I've trained him to be more consolidated in his responses, I can have him on a longer lead rope. Well, when you start to teach to lunge, Okay, you need to start to lengthen your lead rope. But first we have to go back and teach him the basic cues. Basic aids, I should say. And then we consolidate the aids to light responses, then voice cues, and then we can start to go out into our more of our lunging position. See how he's slowing down, so he's not, so what I do is I see how he's not ready to lunge yet forward. So I'm thinking of my rhythm, one, two, three, light, heavier, release, light, heavier, release. And see how light. So I want him nice and active walking next to me, but good boy, light, heavier. He's been out of work for quite a few years, so he's, he's been retrained, but we definitely need to consolidate. Good. Light, heavier. See how he's responding? More to his lead light. Heavy. So light. Heavy. Good boy. See how he's responding. More active now. Light. Heavy. I'm asking him to maintain his rhythm. Light. See how he's responded to the light lead rain there? And he's even going into a trot. Ready? Light. So I can put my uh, there. One more. Good boy. And I just ask him to slow backward and release. Elbow nice and soft. I can 
See, I can correct him straight away. Well, that's, that's a bit, I was a bit late in my response then. Okay, but I corrected him. Good. So when we train, we do sets, so we don't go around for a half an hour doing that same thing. Okay, 10, 15 minutes is max. Good boy. I reward him. Good. Oops, so I see how I can just correct him. Good. And then, oops, so see how he's wandering. He wants to go back. So I won't leave it. He's looking out that way. So I'm just going to ask him to come forward. We'll just come to the camera and just face him towards the camera just so that he can see his little mates over there. Okay. Good boy. I'm so proud of you. So he's not off the track thorough, but he's quiet, but he can still get a little bit anxious. And as I said, he's been out of work for years. So see how he wanted to follow my legs. So I'm just teaching him, nope, the only time you move forward, see he wants to follow me. So he's just not, he's not understanding. This is why it's not good to just allow your horse to follow your legs because there's a lot of times when you don't want the horse to follow your legs. See how he's just not standing. So I just correct him. But and he's, he's a little bit wanting to go back to his good. So we've done our sessions long enough. It's time to finish. Good. So see how I correct him. Good boy. And I'm going to take him back now and give him some hay. And, and that's our session for today. But I just wanted to explain to you um, that you can hold your rein about 15 centimetres under here. You have more control with your horse. Okay. It doesn't have to be. Um, you can slide your hand down and up, but you really don't have, if your horse does start to move around and you're like this, so see how he wants to move. So he's understanding now he's getting, but if he does move or he wanted to spin around, I, I have to quickly grab down. Whereas I'm a lot more, I have a lot more control when I'm holding, you know, around. You can adjust a little bit, but you want to be able to apply your aid, your, your lead rein aids hope that um, clears everything up. Any questions, uh, pop them in the comments. And yeah, please, if you are, aren't, haven't subscribed to my video channel or subscribe to my YouTube video channel and click on the description to find out some more trainings. If this is on YouTube, I'll pop this in the Facebook group as well and everything. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.